Nudson. Mr. Tursky. This is two guys talking golf. And technically a third guy. We got a third it's guy really today. Three, it's really three guys talking <laughs> golf. So I talk a lot about photographer Greg Moore on yep. this show. I refer to him a lot. I give him shout outs a lot. And today <laughs> we meet the man himself. Greg, That's welcome right. to the show. I have been on the show before, in the studio <laughs> in Dearborn. Oh, yeah, that's, that's true. true. That's true. First time around, I, was I think that was what, that like five sign... years ago now? Oh, it might be more than that, but I yeah. was upset that I forgot to sign the wall. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that, uh, that studio after COVID times has been kind of shut down, and it's a little dusty. I don't think the signature would have held on. <laughs> yeah, what does it look like now? What's, what's um, the scene down there in the, the old studio? Have you ever seen a horror movie where you walk into the basement and, uh, you know, things are dusty and just uh, all out of order? That's kind of what it's like. <laughs> it's uh, it was, it, it's basically mid-construction, so I had this great idea of these, like, changes, like the redo of this desk, uh, this, like, standing desk, and then do the back wall with this, like, wood paneling. I had all these great ideas, and then we started doing them. And then we stopped going into the office and just kind of all that stuff is just laying on the floor down there. COVID, man. COVID. Yep. Well, Greg, yep. I don't want to call you out, but I do hear that you're a fan of the show. Well, I don't know if you're I a fan, li- but you listen to it. I do listen to the show, and you know I've given you some constructive criticism. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's like our biggest hater. It's so funny. I love it. No, every, every time not. I come, every time I come to the course on Monday, he'll he'll have something to say. He's like, "Yeah, I mean, you guys rambled on just way too long about this topic, but this just topic like we're doing good. now, <laughs> yeah, just exactly like we're doing now." So, uh, Greg's not a fan of the rambles, so let's get right into it. Um, I was not right. at Southern Hills in Tulsa, unfortunately, this week, but Greg was holding it down. I solo. missed you too. Yeah. So just <laughs> describe describe the scene out there, like as it relates to the to the job, and then I'll ask you some questions about Tulsa and the course itself. But you know, what was the setup well, out there, and how is it going? Um, well, the media parking lot was about forty minute uh, bus ride to the golf course oh, every oh, morning. That is the worst. So yeah, and it and they were leaving. They changed the schedule every time. So they said they were going to leave on the top of the hour and the bottom of the hour. So I I, I made the, the bus I wanted to get on Monday morning. They changed it on the return and said, no, now we're leaving on the 15s and the 45s. So I missed the bus I wanted to get on to leave. Monday. Oh, no. <laughs> so I arrive Tuesday, and they went back to the top and the bottom of the hour. Oh, so you miss it again without without letting you guys by know. like one minute. <laughs> oh, and then so, you're just standing there with all your stuff for like half hour. Yeah, and it was <laughs> it, they let us on the bus because it was raining, and then they ended up having to hold us for another thirty minutes because there was a rain delay, a lightning oh. delay, and so so that you know it's just we don't have quite that many mess ups on the big tour, but so when I get there course you know no andrew so the putting green is at the bottom end of the range even though they're hitting uphill so i mean that sounds weird but from where the putting green was the range was 450 yards down the hill Hmm. and they have a great practice area they've got three green probably short game area better than any ever anyway wow. big words um, uh, seriously i mean just you if you you could have any type of shot that you would hit on the golf course on the little three green practice area and wow. they also had uh, a practice putting green and another chipping and bunker area behind the range tee and i always felt like if i was on the top green i was missing players on the bottom green and if I went down and worked the bottom green, I was missing players on the top. But I kind of <laughs> figured it out by the, the second day that the players ride a shuttle all the way down to the range tee. And so they either putt down there first and then hit balls or hit balls and putt. 
or just hit balls and get back on the shuttle and go to tee because unlike a regular PGA Tour event, there are assigned starting times at, uh. at major championships. And if you miss your starting time, you you got to find another open slot on the tee sheet. So if, if they were a little bit delayed, sometimes they hit two or three putts and I didn't have time to shoot a bag. But then in the afternoon, they'd go back because the upper putting green was really close to the player's locker room and the parking area. They just walk over, but sometimes they only walked over with their putter and a few balls. So again, no bag. So it would have been great to have Andrew there and one of us on the top, one of us on the bottom. But um, hopefully in future PGA championships, we've got it worked out to where they now know uh, who Golf WRX are or is and who Andrew and I are because um, new media group running the media for PGA championship. And while I've done PGA championships from 2009 through 2019, they took over during COVID and I didn't go to any of the major championships during COVID. So it was starting almost from ground zero again. We got to get some respect on that, that golf to your ex name, Greg. Uh, yeah. And they, I and, think we got it now. They made a few phone calls. Yeah. They made a few phone calls <laughs> to the tour and they were, they were very apologetic <laughs> that uh, they sort of dropped the ball on this one. So I don't see it happening again. Well, it seems like you killed that, it this that, week out there uh, solo, even though the setup was tough. Um, how many what's in the bags did you end up getting, and what was the photo count? I know you always keep track of these. <laughs> uh, I think there was 30 what's in the bags. Wow. Uh, or 29. Maybe it was 29 what's in the bags. There were 50 albums total, and it was a little over 2,000 photos. Man. Round of applause. Seriously. <laughs> I don't, so, I don't so have I, a sound button, but I would hit the fake <laughs> round, of applause, round of applause right now, yeah. What's, oh, uh, what's your record? Where does that stand near the record? 37 for a three-day total of what's in the bags. But at Huntsville <clears throat> Corn Ferry this year, instead of going to Mexico, I drove down there and I did 29 in four hours and 15 minutes. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> four hours. <laughs> for people for people listening who don't know, like, the process of trying to get uh, what's the bag, because, like, you need permission from the player. You have to talk to the player. Then you have to actually shoot the bag. Like, that is that is not easy, but Greg has it down to such a science. Like, there will be a player that's literally ready to go out on the tee in, like, three and a half minutes, and he'll be talking to the caddy. He'll be like, trust me, all I need is two minutes and 43 seconds. Like, I'll be done. <laughs> <laughs> and he'll nail it every time. It's so great. Yeah. And I, it tell is the a... cat, I tell the player or the caddy, look, I only need two minutes. And, <laughs> and they're like, two minutes? I go, yeah, but you can't talk to me because <laughs> I, I have to focus and really nail it out. But at Corn Ferry uh, in Huntsville, it was super cold, super windy. So all the caddies were just standing with the bags around the putting green waiting for the players to come out of the clubhouse. And they didn't want to come out because it was cold. And so I just started at one side of the putting green and just kept walking around. Every time a new bag came out, just just nail them as fast as I could. So, um, but same thing, like doing Tiger's bag. I'll ask Joe. I'll say hi, and he goes, "What do you want?" And I go, "You know what I want." <laughs> and I only need two minutes, and he'll be like, "Well, if I let you do it, every other photographer is going to be coming over here." I said, "Look, in the time we've talked, that could have been done." <laughs> so, so he'll like, well, let me check if, you know, in this spe specifically, uh, on Tuesday morning, he goes, I don't know what the plan is. Um, because Tiger had a noon presser, so he wasn't really going to play. I don't think he, he, but it was like, he was hitting bunker shots and he goes, uh, let me see how many balls he's got left in the bunker. And he had about four or five. So by the time Joe walks back over again, I go, Joe, I could have been done. <laughs> he goes, well, i got to wait and see. When he walks out of the bunker, if I get the head nod, that means we're going to the range. So he came over and he started chipping. And I was like, Joe, come on, at least let me shoot the, the two iron and the three iron. Okay, yeah, yeah, go ahead. So I'm, like, I'm <laughs> slamming that out of the way. In the meantime, like three other photographers are there, and they're going, can we shoot? I go, you have to ask Joe. You can't touch a club unless Joe says you can. 
I said, but I'll set them up for you. So, you know, he's shaking his head no for the other photographers. While That's I'm great. Oh. <laughs> That's awesome. So, so then they uh, he, he, he went to hit some balls. He didn't hit very many balls. And then he comes back and he's putting. And so I'm looking at Joe giving him the, come on, you know, like this, shoot the bag. And so he nods his head. He goes, and he points, and he goes, but only you. As soon as I start, Dave Dusick is right next to me. He goes, I won't touch the clubs. I just want to feed off you. So I set them all up. He's taking photos. Then one of the Japanese photographers come over, and she had already been told no. I mean, oh. like by Rob and by Joe. Just a no. flat no? That's hard. Flat no. Oh. And so she asked me, she goes, can I shoot the driver and the putter? Tiger's got the putter. <laughs> what, are you going to walk over and <laughs> grab it from him? Yeah. Yeah, go like, grab it. Why don't you go no, out you there and walk on the putting green and ask him? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and no, you can't shoot the driver. So <laughs> I'm going through and, and finishing up, and she just reaches in, grabs the driver. Oh. Because Joe wasn't looking, and then all of a sudden oh, Joe looks. God. And, I mean, he's got this, like, frown on his face, and oh. I'm giving it the... Yeah, it wasn't me. Don't yell going, at me. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, she gets done, and I took the driver from her, put the head cover on, put it back in the bag. <laughs> wow. So I see him a, a little bit later when Tiger leaves for the presser. Joe's just kind of hanging out because I think Tiger was going to come back and hit some more balls, which he did. And I told Joe, I said, hey, I'm sorry. I told her she had to ask you, and she couldn't touch the club. He goes, I don't like them. They, she bangs the clubs around, and you know they get all banged up and dinged up. I said, well, if it's any consolation... I took the driver from her. I put the head cover on, and I put it back in the bag, and it didn't get dinged up. He goes, "Okay, we're good." <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Speaking of Tiger's bag, I mean, there oh, was some hype. About... There was some hype around it this week with that oh, yeah. two and three oh, yeah. iron. He had yeah. new wedges in, and it's it's funny. Wedges, like, yep. Um, in the in the media, you know, there's some people who like run up to Tiger because they want to talk to him. For like us in the media, as soon as that bag goes down, we just all start running over to it. It's like, all right, when are we going to get a chance to photograph Joe. some of this stuff? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Hey, Joe. <laughs> but Greg and, always has the inside track on this stuff. Yeah, go ahead, nuts. Yeah, and, and with and with oh no, with Tiger, I think you've said before, Greg. Like people always ask, like shooting Tiger's bag. I mean, he is the guy that everybody wants to know about. And I think a lot of times you've said like. I don't know if it's you or Joe. It's just kind of like, yeah, I guess you can shoot it, but nothing's changed. Like, it's the same thing. and It's been there every other tournament. And, and finally, and we've got a big week that he has something different. Yeah. Well, and Joe, I don't <clears> think, <throat> is a, a real equipment guy, just like Bones was. It. I, you know, I'd see Bones uh, at a tournament with Phil's bag, and I'd say, anything new? And he goes, I don't know. Phil keeps <laughs> the bag with him. And so if I say, Joe, anything new? He's like, I don't know. I've seen the bag. Tiger's had it the whole time. <laughs> so sometimes it's new to him when I'm pulling head covers off. Now, at PNC, he did know there was a new driver in the bag uh, uh, because uh, I think the tailor-made people had, had told him or maybe Tiger had. So he knew there was going to be some buzz on on that driver there. And he always, you know, when he sees me walking up, he's like, all right, what do you want? <laughs> I want to say hi to you, Joe. We'll talk a little bit, you know, do the dance. But you really know what I want. Yeah, we can talk for 17 seconds, but start handing those clubs over. Is is there anyone out there who, like, consistently gives you kind of a hard time when you're trying to shoot a, a what's in the bag? Well, a few of the guys that are no longer on the PGA Tour. Ernie Els was always tough. VJ was tough at times, but then he got a little easier. Uh, and Freddie Couples was always tough. They really? Just, yeah, yeah, Freddie doesn't want you to touch like, his uh, irons and wedges, I think it is, specifically. Like, you're not allowed to touch yeah, uh, Freddie's uh, clubves. Yeah. Which I respect. It's like, yeah, don't touch yeah, my stuff. I, like, I can't I'll keep even, the juju I that I want on those the... clubs. <laughs> 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 I can't even tell you the last time I shot Couples clubs. Uh, it, it's probably eight years ago yeah uh, at least um it varied uh when joe was out there joe's going i don't care just go do whatever you want but then he's bounced between a couple of different caddies out there and they kind of know so they would say you need to ask him so yeah. you know 
I'd look at and sometimes they Ernie would see me standing by the green or follow him around and he'd go to the locker room or go to his car and just leave. <laughs> <laughs> just, just avoiding Greg. <laughs> yeah. But then when he when he signed uh, the Exio deal, uh, I'd get the the Shrixon guys involved and uh, you know and, and sometimes it's get the reps involved. Uh, they'll be like, Hey, you know, we get some publicity out of this and whatever. Fair, guys vary. It's, it's, it's yeah. not so much. I don't think they want you to touch the clubs. It's how many other photographers are then going to touch the clubs, right? Right. Or want to get in the bag? Well, Danny, I mean, like Danny Lee doesn't let you touch the clubs, right? Isn't isn't he weird about it too? Oh no, Danny. Or no, who is it? Danny Lee lets me. Marty Dow. Marty Dow who plays oh, the yeah that he when he got first got his card uh, from at that time it might even been web dot com before Corn Ferry he, he was playing RSM and I saw his caddy on the putting green and so I walked over introduced myself said what I did and who I worked for and could I shoot a what's in the bag he's like yeah sure go ahead. So I'm lining the clubs up, you know, click with the head covers on, head covers off, driver in hand, click. Marty walks up. He goes, what are you doing? I go, told him who I was, what I did, shoot what's in the bag, asked your caddy. He says, it's fine. He goes, no, nobody touches my clubs. <laughs> I, at first, I thought I was being punked. You yeah, know, yeah. Like, just, <laughs> Someone put him out to it. And then it was like. Yeah, and then he was like, no, seriously, nobody touches my club. So I was like, oh, I'm sorry. I put the club back in the <laughs> bag, set it down, and have never shot it since. Yeah, sorry, wow. sir. <laughs> yep, it well, won't well, happen again. Yeah, and didn't you he say lost his, And he lost his card after the first year, so. <laughs> Not that he deserved that it. that was but... the reason why. <laughs> yeah, a little karma. No. I wasn't, but... <laughs> I wasn't wishing it on him, honestly. <laughs> yeah, because haven't you said before, Grant, like, Hideki's a tough one? Not, not because... He doesn't want you there. It just he usually has a ton of clubs in the bag. Like he's always testing, right? Like exactly. he just yeah. has a bag full of clubs. Yeah, and you don't know say, what to shoot. A lot of times he's got it narrowed down by Tuesday afternoon or Wednesday morning or pro am. So if I see him on Monday or Tuesday morning, he'll be like uh, tomorrow. And. And again, for the longest time, he wouldn't let the Japanese photographers shoot the bag. And I think part of it was, even though I don't think he has a full contract, or even if he does with Shrixon, they know he's not necessarily playing a Shrixon driver or maybe a Shrixon fairway wood or something in there. But I'm sure it's um, sort of a Japanese culture in that he doesn't want to embarrass his sponsors. Oh. So the Japanese photographer shooting it, it's going to make big news in Japan, even though we have a large fan base worldwide. And I'm sure there are plenty golf WRX members from Japan or Korea or whatever. It, it's, he thinks of it more as we're a United States based website. So he'd let us, let me shoot him. And then the Japanese photographers will say, well, why do you get to shoot them? And we don't. I'd say, don't ask me, ask them. <laughs> not up to me. I don't set the rules. I just ask. And, you know, and, and, and there's a lot of photographers that don't want to ask players, so they'll just wait. There's a certain one that, even on this podcast, <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be like, uh, I'll just follow in uh, and, and grab them right behind you. Hey, it's whatever. Some Listen, guys, I Greg's got the hookup fine. with everyone. He's got he's <laughs> no. got the inside connect. Like literally everyone, though. When you walk, like even outside the ropes at a PGA Tour event, inside the ropes, you go in the media tent. Whoever it is, Greg knows them personally, and he's probably already done a favor for them. <laughs> it's like, anyone, caddies, players, you, you name anyone that's out there at a PGA Tour event, and Greg knows them. It's it's incredible. Well, well it's. You do it long enough, and you try and stay out of their way. You know, I'm not a writer, so they can talk around me, and they know I'm not going to repeat whatever they say. Yep. So there's a confidence in in that regard, and you help them however you can, and they're willing to reciprocate back because 
it's a symbiotic relationship out there. I need them, so if I help them in some small way, they're more than happy to help me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and 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 with that, like like you said, uh, you know, not oh my god, I just like literally lost my train of thought. I think. Oh, no. <laughs> and it, I and it had, button. Like, I literally had like I had this like great question like ready to go and then like I'm just like waiting and then like it I was just, too like, good absolutely went it was too yeah. went blank It'll it was too good to yeah. come back let it you. rip wow oh wow. did you really forget it I literally forgot it <laughs> <laughs> well I'll take this time to uh, get us back on yeah, track I mean, um, thank you how Jeez. was how was Tulsa I hear it was quite hot actually it's not August hot so. It's not that bad. Uh, Monday was was pretty nice. Uh, Tuesday morning was once we got to get to the golf course because of the lightning delay passing. Uh, it spit a little rain here and there, but it the, the cloud cover kept it nice and cool. But about eleven forty five, when that sun came out and started sucking that <laughs> rain out of the ground back up, it got a little steamy. But again, not August steamy. And it was warm yesterday and a little steamy, too. We, I don't know if they got any rain Tuesday night, but uh, I'm just happy it was in May there and not August. But it, uh, and, and I mean, really watched any coverage today, so I don't know if it uh, looked like the temperatures were going to be high 80s, low 90s, probably with a little humidity. But that's not like 100 and 100 that it could be in August. Right. And then it looks like it might chance of maybe a little rain on Saturday, cooling down into the 70s, and then maybe a Sunday even being in the 60s. So uh, they're going to get, and I guess different winds. So it, it could be a real challenge um, just to get through the cut and the heat and then uh, deal with the winds and the cooler temperatures and potentially rain on the weekend. So Did you do we'll a see. course walk at all? How'd the course look to you? I, I didn't because... Uh, I, I did a couple holes, but Tuesday, by the time I got to the course, because of missing the fir- the bus that I wanted to get because they changed the time, <laughs> and then the the 30-minute delay, so brutal. I was like, because uh, I, was, I was planning on getting there so early that I would have been done. I was going to do like front nine Tuesday morning, back nine Wednesday morning, and usually... I started at about sun up, and it takes me about an hour and ten minutes to do all eighteen holes, hole by hole photographs. I didn't want to miss anybody on Tuesday. I, I did. I think I did sixteen or eighteen what's in the bags on Tuesday, and didn't really start until about eight forty because of all the delay. So I was like, "Well, I'm not walking the course." And then Wednesday morning, it was. I got there early, but it was like. I just want to make sure I don't miss anybody that I, I think I need. You know, we were looking kind of for web at the time, and um, so no, I guess that was the long version of saying no. I didn't walk the course, which <laughs> yeah, I Greg, I mean, you could just it's, told uh, me no. We could have went on to another topic, but yeah, have at it. <laughs> it's your podcast. <laughs> yeah, it's, well, it's the rambling. You know, I'll, I'll critique my rambling on there. Yeah, too. right. You better not listen right. back to this one. Um, well, let's cut to the real chase. How did Tiger look? How was how he walking? How was he swinging? I felt like, and again, I wasn't at Augusta, so we were looking at his his walk, his gait, his limp, whatever you want to call it, from what we saw on TV. Even I was standing there when he got off the, the shuttle cart down to the range and started walking with one of the reps, and they were like, wow, he really is limping. And it was very pronounced. Um, and then I thought about it a little bit. You know, the, the break in the leg, and if I remember right, there was some splintering they showed in the x-rays, whoever mm-hmm. leaked those. Yeah. When that bone heals back together, it's not going to be the same length as it was oh, before. Yeah. So I'm thinking he's probably always going to have a little bit of a limp because that leg might be – it might not be from the pain or anything like that. It's just maybe 
Maybe he's got a, going to have to put a lift in that uh, foot joy shoe. <laughs> the oh, foot joy that's true. shoe. That's <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> so officially confirmed. Greg Moore says Tiger has one leg shorter than the other now. Doctor Gre- <laughs> Doctor Greg Moore. Yeah, Doctor Moore. <laughs> well, I, I said the same thing. I think it was like was it earlier in the week or something like that they were or maybe it was earlier in the week. I kind of said the same thing. Like. They showed, I think it was a like ESPN or Golf Channel, whatever. I was watching TV, and they showed him walking up kind of a hill near the clubhouse, maybe after you know a practice round or whatever. And it's you know they, everybody's commenting on like how much stronger he is, how he's walking so well, and da da da. And I was like, <clears throat> he's still got that 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 limp. And, and like you said, Greg, I, I think that's just going to be the way he you know he walks from now on. I mean, like you said, that leg is probably never going to be the same as it ever was. And like you said, it may not be an injury or pain thing. It could just be the range of motion, the length, whatever, that he just is always going to kind of have that limp. And it's, uh, you know, that, that was something I, I've noticed. And like I said, I saw it at Augusta. I saw it there. And, you know, I'm sitting there kind of going, everybody's like, man, he's walking so well. And I'm like, I mean, I guess compared to what it could be, sure. Yeah, right. Like, is you he? Know, he doesn't have the same swagger as he, as he did. Yeah, right. Yeah. So let's do a little gear here. Obviously, Tiger was the, uh, the big news. He threw in the P770 2 and 3 iron. Uh, with the mid launch shaft, that new one from True Temper, that's a little bit higher trajectory, a little more spin, steeper landing angle. So he throws in the two and three, takes out the five wood, takes out the three iron blade, which I believe is the first time in his career that he took out a uh, blade three iron. Correct me if I'm wrong there, Nutson. Um, I think. Well, maybe. Uh, I maybe think he really had, had a, a split cavity. Uh, I think he had a cavity. What was it called? Like VR forged or something like that back in the day because it had a Project X PXI shaft in it. And I don't remember the exact head, but it was a cavity back. And I don't remember it was exactly it was a three iron, but he did have that in the bag. So it was either a two or a three iron back when he was with Nike. As I was saying it, I was like, wait, maybe that's not true. But still different than uh, than it years might, past I, and what's typical for Tiger. So obviously some pretty big news there. Um, kind of transitioning his bag more into the player's like improvement category. I mean, at some point, we're going to see Tiger with a bag of of cavity uh, cavity backs. I think at some point, you know, no I way. Mean, if he's still playing at, nope. at sixty five and he's on the Champions Tour, you think he's still rocking old school old school blades? You think? Yeah, and the with one like traditional that will never lofts on him. And two, yes. You don't think Tiger's playing yeah. Champions Tour? Well, maybe. Just... Greg, what well, do you think? No, no, no. Nope. He's got to play no. the, at least the Senior nope. U.S. Open because he needs like every possible usga victory no okay that yeah Yeah. then i could see that maybe and he's got to stay sharp somehow i could see i could see him doing it honestly maybe jack said he'd never play the champions tour and he didn't play it as a regular but he played the majors Mm -hmm. and maybe one or two others so tigers never commented uh, that i know of and, and maybe Maybe as he another year or two, somebody will ask him, or maybe somebody has already asked him. But um, I don't know. I've always thought that he wouldn't. But now that you make that connection to senior USGA Open, makes sense. I, th- I feel like he would have he would have a really funny response do. if someone asked him that. I think he would be like kind of offended, like, "Hey, oh. man, like I'm not that old yet. Okay, let's let's relax on those questions." <laughs> well, you know. Years. <laughs> I was I was I I didn't sit in on the presser, but I'm thinking John Daly's there with a cart. I wonder why somebody didn't ask him would he consider taking a cart this week. I don't think because if, I don't think Tiger would, would take a cart. He's too proud for no, that. I don't think he would either. But yeah. I was waiting for somebody to at least ask. <laughs> I think uh, I think it was at Riviera. Someone asked him that, and he was like, "No, if I ever have to take a cart, like that's not." part of the athletic sport of golf you know that's like for weekend golfers so i think he took it as like a pride thing you know what i mean like i, I ain't taking no cart because that's like unfair to the players and that's not the athletic part of the sport which i makes don't ever sense remember him team. commenting uh when casey martin his college teammate took a cart on tour one way or the other about a cart it's an interesting response though but i think there's some specific circumstances where it's like okay We'll let we'll let that person take a cart. Like if it's something out of their control, but I don't think that's necessarily how Tiger sees it for himself. <laughs> so, no. But speaking of John Daly, um, I mean that was another uh, 
big what's in the bag for the for the site. Yeah. Check it out yeah. in the forums. Uh, torn pre-release. Greg's got all the shots. Um, John Daly comes what's out interesting. with a, a Proto PXG TD driver, and Irons yeah. absolutely caked in lead tape. Couldn't even tell what they were. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but also, too, and I've shot John's clubs before, I felt like the grips were even bigger. Yeah that he's really? ever used before. They were way oversized, and I don't remember him because he's a very handsy player. Right. And now you start going bigger grips, that kind of reduces, I think, maybe a little hand action. Um, I could be wrong, but I don't, uh, you know, I I just don't remember him being that oversized, and they were big. Yeah, I talked to Arnie. I wow. sent him a little text because uh, they were super stroke grips, and he said he's playing super stroke oversized with six wraps underneath. And yeah, and then I talked big. to uh, Scotty G because he built the clubs, and I was like, how heavy are those grips and like how much lead tape did you put on there? He's like, well, the grips weigh 82 <laughs> grams themselves, which a normal grip weighs uh, well, 52. 55. Yeah, 55, 52, yeah, 50. somewhere around there. So, you know, he had to counteract that with all that lead tape. And I was like, so what? Like, is there 30 grams of lead tape on there? And he was like, oh, yeah, easily 20 plus. <laughs> That's so, that is so much lead tape to put onto a club head. Those clubs must be so heavy. I mean, did you notice anything like that when you were picking them up, like especially heavy? They they had some they had some heft to them. They did. Yes. Is he the new lead tape? They king? still yeah. felt there. They well, over Scott Piercy. No, because I think Piercy puts his own. on. He does. He does. So if you're putting your own <laughs> yep. on, you're the king. That's yeah, true. That's true. <laughs> Prince Daly. <laughs> and then uh, just some other news. We got uh, Webb Simpson. Switching out of blades and into some T100 irons. Um, he's also got that five and a half iron in there. That's for loft gathering yeah. purposes. That's so funny. But uh, seeing a guy like that, like another kind of old school guy, switching into more of the game improvement category. I know the T100s basically look like blades. They perform like blades just with a touch of forgiveness. But it's interesting seeing more and more guys go that direction. You know, especially after they just made them that nice new set of uh, custom protos. Uh, what CJ Cup last year or when was it? That yeah, we saw those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Show up. Yep. Well, and Adam Scott left the left the company after they made him a set of protos, so at least Webb's still around. <laughs> <laughs> True. Um, other than that, is there anything that stuck out to you, like gear wise, Greg? Out there, I know there was a bunch of custom covers uh, and and all that stuff. Yeah. Maybe I need um, your I need your grade. On, on all those uh, those custom jobs, it's it's always cool to see what the companies come up with like artistically. I like the Callaway bag a lot better than the TaylorMade bag. Shots fired. I understand the TaylorMade bag <laughs> used PGA gold and blue colors that they do yeah. all around, so it was nice. I just thought that the the side panel of the Callaway bag had. Uh, the oil driller guy type uh, motif. Um, the golden driller, my I believe favorite they call putter. it. <laughs> right. The golden I, I think. And, and I wasn't real wild about the color of the Scotty because it was a weird gold, yeah. I thought. Yeah. But I've never been to that golden driller, so maybe he's that weird gold color. But my <laughs> favorite cover, I'm going to throw a little out there for for Phil Long with Axis One was because uh, Phil is a University of Oklahoma Sooner and uh, Don Williams wrote a song country song called Living on Tulsa Time so he asked a few <laughs> of the players a few of the caddies and even a few of the reps and some of them knew the the thought behind that because it said on it and then it had the the clock tower that's right there by the putting yeah. green. So that's a tough. That that's a tough reference for me. Can you sing the song real quick for us, Greg? <laughs> I could, but that would be the total end of your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do the? Uh, I like, said what we need is Weird Al Yankovic to do a modern rap version with a through oh. a few uh, choice words in there to change. That's funny. Living on Tulsa. That's time. funny. <laughs> 
what, what do the players think about those things? Because I know, like, we all go nuts over them. But, like, to the, I mean, to a tour player, a bag, a head cover, whatever, I mean, those are just, I mean, they're part kind of the tools in the, you know, the, the toolbox, and there are a couple covers for some tools. Do those guys kind of get excited about that stuff, too, or do they kind of just see it as, like, yeah, whatever, I'll put it on my club, or yeah, whatever, I mean, put my clubs in there, I don't care? Like, well, where do they the kind of stand on it? Most of the players don't care about the bag, but the caddies hate it because <clears throat> they've got to clear the old one out, yeah. uh, put get everything organized, get the strap adjusted. Usually after carrying it for a while, the side panel's got a little wear where it just writes perfect lay on your you know on your back or your hip a little bit so a few of the caddies there was another media person or somebody that came up to one of the caddies and said we they were with another company you don't have a special bag for this week and he goes the caddy was like no thank god i hate those things <laughs> um, there are some players that collect especially on the cameron side the Cameron covers. They look oh, really? for certain ones because they know there's going to be one in Hawaii. They know there's going to be one in Vegas. They like to get the major ones because um, some of them are collectors. And wow. there are some that maybe used to be Cameron guys. Now they're with another company or using another putter. If they're not using and haven't been using one, even if they're a Titleist staffer, they're not getting a specialty cover. It's wow! Only for the ones that go that with a putter through, you know, that's been using it. That's going to go through the count using it. I mean, those tour guys—they wow. get so much free stuff. Like, I bet oh, they have yeah. a real problem with storage. And then it's also like, if you don't play well in that event, like, I kind of want to throw the head cover out because like, I don't want to be reminded <laughs> of it ever again. But I'm sure what a, what a lot of guys do is like sign the head cover and and give it away to someone, give it to the company. Well, they or, might do to their. Or charity, foundation, or charity you know, yep. to raise money for a foundation or something like that. Uh, yeah. I mean, there are some that make it to the secondary market, and the better ones can, uh, Cameron Putter Cover can go for thousand dollars to $3,500. Crazy money. Yeah, it is crazy money. But um, uh, Betnardi did a nice cover. Um yeah. Trixon didn't do a bag. Ping didn't do a bag. Titleist doesn't do bags. Um, I respect Titleist for that. that They're was, like, I'm that, not playing this game. As, Listen, you're getting the black, white, yeah. and red bag, and shut up. We're not doing any custom That's stuff. It. You want the custom yeah. stuff? Go see Scotty. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I don't um, know, man. I, I think that Titleist bag in, in, like, in like green and white for just the Masters, if you just did the Masters one, would be – Absolutely. Well, at this point, they'd have Personal. everyone and going crazy because they never did a did it. Masters one. Yeah, PXG did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they PXG did, did one for the Masters, and I didn't see any changes unless they were holding it back until <laughs> t- today's start of play, which would kind of be they're not going to yeah. get Golf WRX coverage if uh, they hold it back. But uh, <laughs> I didn't see any any PXG. Bag. You're the gatekeeper. It ain't, uh, it ain't going on golf to your ex. Shopley hadn't changed into his uh, updated bag yet. I'm sure it's in the locker room, so he probably did by the time uh, uh, he started play today. He had a pretty interesting little setup in there. You see he added a Mizuno driving iron, Nudson? What do you, what do you think about that one? No, I didn't I, I, I didn't see it, but I like that driving iron a yeah. lot. Yeah. Um, I've actually it's in my bag right now for when I go play. This of course afternoon. it is. I've got that uh, fly high the the, the four iron version. <laughs> so I probably got a little softer flex shaft, but I, I do have that in the bag. And uh, great four iron version with the loft jack to three. Iron. <laughs> <laughs> wow. No, no, it would be jacked the other way. It'd be weak, way weak. I need to get the ball off. <laughs> Greg, you mentioned uh, PXG. That reminded me of uh, another story um, this week. I believe that Patrick Reed. Signed with PXG to play their driver, right, Nudson? Or am I am I bugging about that? Like uh, that happened, right? No, I I, I think uh, yeah, he was playing the driver when he moved over, okay, or was going to, or whatever. But yeah, he, I was just under that assumption. Well, as well, this week Greg got some photos of uh, Reed with a, a new Grindworks prototype out of nowhere. Yeah, like is is he gonna is he gonna play that shocked. driver? Did you get any indication, Greg, whether he was going to 
That's what he told me. So, so when Kessler, his caddy, came on the putting green Monday afternoon, they'd just flown in, and Patrick had gone to uh, check in, register. I asked Kessler, okay, to shoot the bag, and he said, sure. So, you know, usually the first pictures are with the covers on it, and then when I pop them off, I'm like, oops, there's a PXG <laughs> driver in there, but I can see it's got a steel shaft, and it's like two or three inches longer than, maybe a couple inches longer than a normal length driver would be. Huh. So I was like, you sure it's okay if I shoot <laughs> This if I driver. shoot this, it's probably like, illegal, but I'll shoot yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> he's like, no, I'm talking about the grinder. Oh, oh, oh okay. So, so because I did shoot the other one, I pulled it out, and it has a a ping putter grip on it. He uses it as a training club. Ping putter grip. And he's used other drivers before. Yeah, it, it's to I'm sure to work on where his hands go on mm. relative to the the square the how square the face is. Gotcha. Okay. So he's like. Well, yeah, shoot the Grindworks driver, but then ask Patrick when he comes back. So I shoot the whole bag. Patrick comes out. We're talking for a little bit. I go, hey, shot the bag, but I won't post it, that driver if you don't want me to. And he's like, yeah, maybe hold it. Um, yeah, don't post it, and I'll I'll let you know. I go, that's fine. So Tuesday night, I... Um, I sent a text to Kessler, hey, he's out on the course. That's the only driver in the bag. <laughs> Somebody's going to get a photo of it. I'm thinking. I didn't say that in the, the text to Kessler, but I was like, hey, did, can you check with them? Am I still? How long am I supposed to hold it or whatever? Wednesday morning, he, he rolls out you know, on the range at about, I don't know, quarter nine, something like that, maybe nine, ten, fifteen sees me and he goes go ahead and post that driver <laughs> i go for sure for real he goes might as well it's going to be the one in the bag and i was like i wow. can hold it if you want me to until you know after you tee off on thursday because mm -hmm. it'll be in the count he goes nope go ahead and post it wow so we all speculate you know i don't think patrick has ever commented on whether he signed a, a deal to play the driver there was a photo uh, from a previous tournament, was it Avenal, where he had a Callaway that was on Sunday, mm -hmm. which doesn't mean he didn't go through the count on Thursday with the driver and maybe he had an issue, could crack, problem with the shaft, who knows, or he just switched um, for whatever reason. We don't know. I don't know if anybody asked Patrick. I didn't, and he didn't. he didn't say. So he may have a, an agreement with PXG that this other Grindworks driver is in the works and when it comes out because I have a deal with them I'm going to you know switch over I don't know and again I didn't ask him and he didn't offer right. I mean I've been speculating yeah. about the Grindworks how, thing how, for a while because like I feel like he either has percentage of the company or some sort of deal but um, when I was covering like when he put for, he first put them in the bag, I reached out to the guy from Grindworks, uh, Nimi. I think that's how you pronounce it. I think it's Nimi. Um, he was just saying that I think it was uh, Justine who just emailed him out of the blue, like, hey, we want to try it. your irons out. So whatever happened, I think it was all pretty organic with, uh, with Grindworks. Um, and I did get a set of them like six months ago. They're quite soft. I will say that. And they and they look really? pretty good too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He sent over the because um, I was well, going back and forth with him for a while, and he finally sent sent them over. And I was like, I just got to try them. So he sent the Patrick Reed versions, and it was it was just pretty cool, like trying out an iron that's literally built for someone else. But go ahead, Greg. Sorry to cut you off. A lot of people comment about the <laughs> ultimate club tester, tinker, or mm -hmm. whatever. I, I and I don't know if Patrick's name ever comes up, but. He tests a lot of always out there, a lot grinding, of shafts, yeah. a lot of head and shafts wow. combinations to find, uh, you know, what's going to work best for him. And the problem with the, any of those players, when they have a driver and a shaft that works, 
and then something happens, the face cracks or something happens to the head or the shaft, it's starting over from ground zero. It's not, Oof. you just grab another head and put that same shaft and it works because it doesn't. And it's, you know, where does the rack glue go on this <laughs> one or what, where do the, where do the <laughs> slider weights go or, you know, how do I orient the shaft or, you know, now I need a, cause even the shafts, I don't care how good they make them in graphite, they're, that kick point could be a nth of a degree, higher, lower, whatever, and those guys know the difference. Yeah. And so that's why they're constantly looking, and, you know, who knows? Who is the biggest tinker out there? The- Tough question, I know. As far as Hideki. changing the most, most equipment? <laughs> yeah. Hideki. Well, yeah, yeah, never I changed, guess that was a dumb question. He, That's he probably answer. had 15 <laughs> shafts leaning up against his bag. <laughs> you know, graphite design shafts uh, uh, up against the I bag. I love when he has the second bag, too. He, like, he'll have the bag that's full of all the shafts, and, you know, he's got 50 clubs in there, and then he's got another backup bag. It's like. <laughs> well, you know that. He's got. He's coming out with a lot of bags when there's four or five in the entourage, yeah. and one guy's a wedge guy, <laughs> one guy's a second set of irons, one guy's the Scotty Cameron. Greg's guy, not exaggerating. One guy's no. got like the, that's, the driver that's literally what shafts. happens. He has a whole entourage no, that like, are just like club yeah. carriers for the day. It's so funny. Yeah, uh, people, <laughs> the, the players when I go to shoot their bag or ask to shoot their bag, sometimes they'll go, "Oh, there's a lot of clubs in there," and I go, well, "I don't care." And it's, if it's Tuesday, I always say. I call Tuesday 22 Club Tuesday. <laughs> Poor caddies just like, <laughs> you know, just lugging them all. But that's their test. 22 Club Tuesday. And so I love that. I never heard you Club say that. Tuesday. That's a good one. And the player will oh, yeah. The, the player will say, well, what's the record for the most clubs in the bag? And I go, 50 in the bag. And they're like, <laughs> they're like, I said, and it's not Hideki. They go, that's who I was just going to say. I said, no, Hideki, I've seen him maybe with 100 clubs. But they're not in the bag. The, the record has to be in yeah, the yeah. bag. And it was Patrick Reed <laughs> really? the first year. <laughs> at first year we were at uh, Quicken Loans. They have a, 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 a smaller putting green, and then they're using one of the holes from the other nine as a yeah. chipping green bunker. And they have a cart stage there for them to drive down to one of the holes that they're using as the practice area down near where the trucks and he came up from the trucks and he carried the bag from that card area about a um, hundred yards or so to the putting green Kessler wasn't there yet and I wanted to shoot the what's in the bag and he goes there's a lot of uh, clubs in the bag and at that time the record was 38 and it was Stuart <laughs> sink <laughs> <laughs> so I counted them and I said, "There's 50." He beat him by 12. He goes, "I told you there were a lot of." I said, "I told you there were a lot of clubs." Oh, there are. That just doesn't yeah. logistically Break make sense back. to fit in a golf bag. 50, 50 clubs. I know the staff bags are big. But. Well, not only that, once you take one out, it's near impossible to get them back in. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so you know, and I'm I'm not want to jam them or you know tear the grip up, put it back in. So uh, it was like. A struggle. It would like take one out, shoot it, and then take one out to put the other one back in, and then at the end it was holding one odd club, going, "Okay, now how do I get this one back in the bag?" <laughs> Nuts, and I felt like you uh, uh, you yeah, wanted to get a question I, in there. Yeah, I mean, we, we talk about like you know you, you, these guys, a lot of these clubs, like how often, or like the Grindworks driver, like how often do guys ask you like not to post something or hey, don't shoot that club. Because, I mean, I know you catch a lot of stuff that's on tour, that's prototype, and, you know, we are one of the sites that literally has photos of shafts and clubs before most people do. But how often, even when you get a lot of those, how often do you get asked, like, hey, could you just not shoot this, or hey, could you hold on to that photo? Uh, you know, how, how often is that? Is that like an every week thing, or is that like a couple times a year? Well, towards the end of the year, maybe when contracts are starting mm-hmm. to come up or get close to coming up the player maybe making a decision they're going to stay with the company move to something else when i see stuff it's not so much the player asking me not to shoot it i'll ask the player do you is it okay if i shoot it 
Yeah. Because I've always told them, I'm not trying to get you in trouble. I don't want to shoot something that will get you in trouble with your current company or whatever. And I don't want the wrath of the agent coming down on me, you know, saying, why did you shoot that? Uh, the problem is I'm the only one that asks. The other uh, websites and magazines, even if they don't get to do a what's in the bag, they'll do a drive-by, take photos, and then post it. And But that's on the player. And I'll warn the player. I go, if they say, no, don't shoot it, you know, or don't post it. Sometimes they'll say, shoot it and hold it uh, until I check, whether it's with their agent or whether it's even with the company. And sometimes the company has already been the one that told me there's something new in the bag. They can't let me shoot it because there's a embargo. But it's known that if it's in the player's bag on the range or on the golf course, it's fair game. So... I'll say something to the player, and they'll go, well, I should check with the manufacturer. And I'll say, you know, off the record, they told me, but they can't let me shoot it on the truck. But Mm -hmm. they know it's fair game in your bag, and they don't have a problem. And then the player will go, oh, okay, yeah, go ahead, then. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, Sometimes they'll leave, but they'll still, a few will still go, yeah, I still want to check. And I go, that's fine. Yeah, no issue. I don't have a problem with it. And sometimes I'll say, hey, is it okay if I shoot it, even with the manufacturer, and hold it? uh, Because sometimes it may be something that hasn't hit the USGA's approval Mm -hmm. list yet. And they'll be like, hold it till Monday. And I say, okay, but is that Monday at 12.01 in the morning? Because you have other people who are out here that will post it at that time? Or is it Monday after 9 a.m.? Eastern time when the USGA puts it on their list because there are a few people every now and then that cheat a little bit and beat us and they may not even have a true photo of it. We get the photo, but they're, they're writing a story on it because they know that's fine. You know, it's, yeah. it's, we have the coverage cause we're out there every single one week. of my favorite situations is when <laughs> it's usually like when a player like has a new club in the bag that's embargoed and either you or me, We'll ask, like, hey, can we shoot a in hand at the club? And they're like, no. And Greg, <laughs> Greg will be like, yeah, but I'm going to snipe it from across the range, and I'm going to zoom in on it, and we're going to have the photo anyway, so you might as well just hand it to me now. <laughs> <laughs> but Greg is a ninja, like, seriously. Exactly. He'll be 1,000 yards away, and he'll show me the photo. <laughs> he'll just start zooming in, and it's like, yep, this is the new model. Greg, you were still in the media center when you <laughs> shot that photo. Like, how the hell? <laughs> Big lenses, baby. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've had equipment companies. They're like, I can't let you shoot it in hand. I was like, what's well, in that player's bag 12 yeah. feet away? Yeah. I... And I'll take a photo of it with my 100-400 and zoom in, and you can see all the, you know, the buff marks from polishing it on the <laughs> wheel. And they're like, I said, I might as well have right, it in my right. hand. They're like, damn, I didn't know you could get that close. <laughs> Yeah, I can. <laughs> and they're always so upset about it. It's like, but sometimes, it. like there's nothing I can do about it. <laughs> and your rule is, once it's out well, there, it's fair game, so I'm going to post it. I've told them, I said, if you don't want us to shoot, you go to the other end of the range. We don't go down there, whether it's at at uh, TPC Sawgrass, uh, at Bay Hill, a couple of ranges where there's a, a range they can test clubs. I said, but if you test them here... It's unfair to tell me I can't take it when on a Tuesday there could be somebody 10 feet behind the player, behind the right. rope, and then take a picture of it, and then they post it somewhere else. I said, you're you're only stopping me from doing it, but you're yeah, not yeah. stopping everybody else yeah, in the imp- gallery. Yeah, it's impossible, yeah. And, and then Getty Images is going to get it anyway at some point like during the event. So now we're just now we're just exactly. not first. Yeah. And the photos Getty gets there. it and they don't even know they right, got exactly. it. Exactly. They don't Getty's, know what they took a photo yeah. of. Getty shooting it and not shooting it to yeah, get yeah. equipment. They have no idea what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Um, so we are on a bit of a time crunch here. I know Nudson has this golf league tonight, but I did want to ask one more question because uh, you know me and Greg we do we do a lot of traveling out on tour. We go to all the different stops and you know you got to eat when you're out there and all the media centers they have different food oh. <laughs> so my question for you greg i know we have this conversation a lot but i want you to go on record with it what would you say is the best tournament for food like what media center serves the best food 
during the year? Before COVID, it was always the BMW Championship because they would have a chef doing oh. omelets for you in the morning. Mm-hmm. And then at lunch, they would have three or four different types of pasta noodles and sauces, and they would cook it up for you. <laughs> they always have the best uh, heavy hors d'oeuvres, almost enough to where you could just, that's your, that's your if you eat it at 5 o'clock, that's your meal right. for the evening. Um, so it, that it definitely, I think, would be uh, U.S. Open's not bad, but BMW Championship head and shoulders above everybody before COVID. At, during COVID, a lot of times we were getting prepackaged stuff or very limited selection from all the tournaments because of potential yeah. <laughs> health risks or whatever. So it's slowly starting to come back. Um, I'm not a foodie, so sometimes <laughs> your fancy food is wasted on me. You know, it's like have some wheat bread, some mayo and mustard, <laughs> cold cuts and, you know, provolone cheese or cheddar or, you know, even if it's good old American that's in the wrapper still. I don't care. You know, I'm trying to eat quick, load photos at the same time and get out. So the one thing I did want to say, because there's a lot of comments on the site at times or requests, Greg, can you get this bag? Or Greg, oh, yeah. how come you didn't get that bag? It's a matter of seeing these players. Right. A lot of times, like I was looking for Bubba for two and a half days. And when I left, we were almost out the gate on the shuttle bus leaving. And I saw Bubba getting out of a cart to go to the practice area. First time I saw him. I, it might have been the first time he was there. Um, and, and he's not the only one. There's a lot of times players don't show up, particularly on a tour event. If they've got an afternoon tea time in the Pro-Am, their, their caddy may be there. Mm-hmm. Clubs aren't. And the caddy's walking the course on Monday and Tuesday. If it's a course the player plays regularly and, and knows it, he plays his 9-hole or 18-hole pro-am time on Wednesday and then tees it up on Thursday. And Andrew and I may be already packing it up and heading for a plane some yeah. back home. So it's not that we aren't trying to get those. It's just that we don't see them. Then then you get the guy that that does the request. Hey, hey can you shoot this guy's hey, bag? Hey, Rory can Sabatini's this guy's bag. bag. Can you shoot this guy's bag? <laughs> it, some guys don't change a lot. And so, you know, we'll check and if nothing's changed. We don't do a full on what's in the bag because we'd rather spend that time tracking down what potentially may be a right. bigger story. So, you know, there's certain players we get only a couple times a year and there's others we get five or six times a year because they change a lot and they move the needle I mean we could shoot if Tiger played in 40 events and we shot his bag 40 40 weeks in a row it'd still get more views than any other points in a bag even if he didn't change anything yeah because we have so many members and there some aren't on there every week but we try so you know for the people out there listening that are golf WRXers it's not that we're not trying other than Rory 17. <laughs> <laughs> and he's even aware of it. He, he's, he's got a few fans, and he loves all his fans. But sometimes it just doesn't work out. You know, joking aside, we miss people, and it's not. It's, it's also uh, like time consuming. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you have to literally wait a player out, and they're going through some sort of long practice session, and that might be the only time you saw them, or it's like they're rushing off to. A tea, maybe they're a little late for their tea time, and it's like, yeah, we don't have the five minutes to go through the bag. Well, for Greg, it's two. For me, it's more like five minutes to go through the bag and get all all the what's the bag. It's like sometimes we're trying to get a player. We might see the player, and we still aren't able to execute on getting photos, um, which always is an unfortunate exactly. situation, especially like when you kind of committed basically hour and a half or two hours waiting a player out, and then you don't get it. It's like. Dang, I wasted so much time doing that. I could have been over the playing greens instead of standing here on the range. But, you know, first world problems. Yeah, this. and sometimes while you're waiting for that player to finish up, you're shooting something else, and you just see him walk by and keep right on right. going. You go, dang Oops. it. And maybe he was there for my two <laughs> yeah, minutes, yeah, you yeah. know. Yep. <laughs> but I have been known to stop one what's in the bag, go shoot another, and then come back. So, That's because you're you're quick at it. If I yeah. can get them, I try, I try and get well, them. Well, 
Greg, and and then oh, and then also I, I'm going to go one more because oh. I know it's always interesting, and I think a lot of members are always interested in it. There's a decent. I mean, on the PGA Tour, when you talk to the there's a lot of these tour players who know very well what Golf WRX is. Some of them may even browse the forums. They got burner and accounts like that. on there. There's still a handful. Yeah, I mean, there's still. I mean, I know Jason Gore was always a big one. He was always huge, and you know, was in the forum and stuff. And then, uh, but there's still a no, lot of guys out there. That, there's a ton of them that uh, will comment uh, about what they've seen on Golf WRX, whether it's me shooting their bag or the comments on their bag or somebody else's bag, and the Euro guys. When when we get to see them over here. They're all like, oh, I'm on Golf WX all the time because the guys over here get the equipment way sooner than we do. So oh, we wow. get to see what's coming to us maybe two, three weeks later or two or three months later. Um, so there's guys that track it down all the time. And I have guys, you know, that they'll see me and they're, they're play another tour, whether it's the European tour or South African tour, Asian tour. And they're like, are you the golf WX guy? <laughs> like, yeah. Oh man, I'm. I love your work, man. I'm on there. I'm. I'm seeing those what's in the bags every week, and it's the same thing even with people in the gallery. I mean, they, they we got people yelling. What's interesting is I had a guy call out my username, and then ask me which which right where I was going to shoot my oh next my rifle God. match. And I was like, <laughs> what? And he was he's a shooter that I'd met at a match somewhere he was just like yeah i got a buddy that's a member here he got me tickets to the pga championship but when are you going to shoot next and and uh, uh i was like well I had hendrick stenson and took him out to the rifle range and put him on steel at 1214 he was good huh? that's my he boy. Was pretty pumped about that <laughs> yeah he, he shot very well yeah he was excited uh, about it he likes to shoot so it's one of my favorite players of all time him and yeah. uh, Adam Scott, man, my two favorites. We talked about tournament golf and Ryder Cup captaincy and the, the courses and stuff like that. So yeah, it was a it was a good time. That's pretty awesome. Hudson, play well in your golf league tonight. Sure. We won't keep you any longer. I know you got to go swing a couple in the parking lot here. Uh, <laughs> that's why I got to lace up the shoes in the old lot. Did I miss the? Uh, but does he do the intro later where he does his uh, shout out to his sponsor? I didn't know. Uh, I don't think we're sponsored. We, this no, we, didn't, we, uh, yeah. we we had a. Yeah, this episode we're not. We, we had a, a handful of shows you a few weeks ago. If it was a sponsored ago, episode, then, uh, we'd have you on right Greg? now. We are. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, if I'd have known you didn't have a sponsor, uh, my uh, rifle, the, the stock the yeah. foundation. Uh, stock company i could have got them to like send you a t-shirt or something no so. i'll okay. take it there you go i'll send my address <laughs> over to you. Yeah, coffee mug whatever <laughs> greg you were the godfather of uh, what's guys. in the bags uh, hey just keep pumping out those photos i know yeah, uh, thank golf you off wrx um members and listeners of this show love your work we appreciate you coming on the show welcome yep. back anytime we got to do it again we got to do a, a podcast where thank we get you. your whole backstory yeah, and absolutely. all that but we'll save that for another day <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll do another show. Yeah, I told, I told Andrew when when it's time to write the book. Andrew, oh, I'm writing be that the book. Guy that that all he has to do is bring up a couple of things, and it gets me talking. And it's hard to get me to shut up. But it'll I love take it. Him, it'll take it. It might be three or four volume book. <laughs> That's an encyclopedia <laughs> series. Yeah, I just say, all right, Greg, we're going to write a book. Yeah. I don't even have to ask a question from there. I just press record on my phone, and 24 hours yep. later, we get we got gold. <laughs> <laughs> all right i look forward to seeing you uh monday uh at, yeah i'll uh, be back Colonial. all right guys that was fun and uh this was yeah. two guys talking golf we'll see you yep. next week